Good afternoon to, to everyone, both best for soilers and soil lovers. With my speech, I want to show you in brief some of the most interesting and inspiring dissemination and networking activities performed in my country as part of the Best for Soil project. Specifically, from the beginning of the 2020 year to the present day. But firstly, I would like to introduce you to the background and the main aspect of greenhouse vegetable production in Almeria as well as to some studies and experiences performed by our research team focused on improving soil health and soil fertility through greenhouse soil biosolarization. All this in order to facilitate a better understanding of the scope of the activities carried out along the project. As probably you know, Almeria greenhouses located in the southeast of Spain constitute the largest concentration of greenhouses in the world. In this regard, the development of intensive horticulture in this province has registered a huge increase in greenhouse surface area along the last decade, reaching over 32,000 hectares in 2021, of which more than 10% are certified organic. One of the most relevant aspects of the greenhouse intensive production model in Almeria is that compared to other greenhouse cropping system in which crops are mostly grown in artificial substrate or soilless system, the vast majority of greenhouses in Almeria do it in the soil. This is a fact that clearly indicates growers' acknowledgement of the soil as a key factor linked to the horticultural activity. In addition, it's estimated that more than 85% of the greenhouses in the province are provided of sand mulch, or arenado, as it's locally called, which consists mainly of covering the surface of the crop field with a layer of silica sand. But it also includes a second layer of organic matter, mainly sieve manure, which is placed under the sun layer. In this sense, there is no doubt that the organic layer reports great benefits to crops as it contributes directly or indirectly to physical, chemical, and biological properties of soil. And it is very likely that it has strongly contributed to maintain to soil health and the fertility in the greenhouses of the province for decades. In this regard, a study we performed with soils from 40 intensively managed greenhouses conclude that soil organic matter is key for the maintenance of soil fertility in intensive horticulture and that soil fertility is linked to the composition and diversity of soil fungi community. However, organic matter amendment application, locally called retranqueo, is becoming less common over time. This is mainly due to the work involved in removing the sand layer and the increasing use of mineral fertilizers, which have replaced organic fertilizers in most cases. This fact, together with the common practice of monoculture in these greenhouses, has led to a loss of soil health and therefore to an increased occurrence of soil-borne diseases and plant parasitic nematodes, as well as to soil fatigue. In this regard, for several years, the dominant strategy to avoid soil fatigue and reduce soil pathogen load in soils has been chemical soil disinfestation using mainly methane sodium and dichloropropane, which negatively affect soil biodiversity. In addition to this, the inefficient management of biomass waste is an unsolved problem, mainly due to the location and seasonality of production. On this subject, self-management of fresh plant debris through biosolarization treatment is a smart and sustainable practice. This technique solves the problems linked to the external management of this waste while contributing to the improvement of soil fertility and the reduction of production costs. So, 
Based on the vast experience of our research team on greenhouse biosolarization, we consider this technique as a soil disinfection method with the added value of generate additional economic, productive, and environmental benefits. In this sense, I will now show you some studies on the use of plant debris by biosolarization used both for soil-borne diseases control and soil fertility improvement. For example, this picture are from a commercial greenhouse which so high incidence of the soil pathogen Fusarium oxysporum for my specialis Radicis cucumerinum. This is the causal agent of root and crown rot in cucumber plants. This was a soil that had been cultivated for 14 years with cucumber monoculture and no organic matter had ever been supplied. What did we do? When the crop ended, a biosolarization treatment was carried out through the incorporation into the soil of both fresh seed manure and plant debris, including infected plants, and then solarization in summer for approximately three months. And what happened? From the figures you see in the slide, it must be highlighted that pathogenic Fusarium oxysporum, which saw a very high population in soil before treatment, was not identified after treatment. On the other hand, non-pathogenic total fungi population was significantly increased after the incorporation of organic amendment through biosolarization. As a result, the following season to the treatment, there was a 28% increase in cucumber yield compared to the previous season. And as you can imagine, the farmer was very, very, very happy. Likewise, the result of an experiment carried out in two commercial greenhouses infested with root knot nematodes showed that the incorporation into the soil of tomato plant debris, including nematode infected roots, along with fresh seed manure and solarization for three months, was effective for the reduction of damage due to these plant parasitic nematodes. On the other hand, the repeated reuse of tomato plant debris obtained at the end of the crop cycle as an organic amendment during three consecutive years had a positive effect on the physical, chemical, and microbiological parameters that determine the fertility of greenhouse soil. In this way, by incorporating this material into the soil, the needs of the tomato crop could be satisfied in reaching yields equal to those obtained by means of exclusive fertilization with conventional inorganic fertilizers, while also maintaining the organolectic quality of the fruit. Likewise, the addition of Swiss pepper plant debris through biosolarization had a positive effect on soil fertility and therefore on crop yield. Anyway, in both studies, the use of plant debris from the previous crop cycle through biosolarization did not lead to the occurrence of any soil-borne diseases along the following crop cycle. Furthermore, this technique accelerates the decomposition of fresh organic matter, so seedling showed no phytotoxicity after transplanting. In addition, these studies conclude that even when treatment had a depressive effect on culturable soil fungi and bacteria population, they tend to regrow and recover along the crop cycle, being this recovery more evident in those plots where fresh plant debris were added. Therefore, this management represents a waste valorization under a circular approach. And now, based on the previous information, I believe that you can better understand the main field of action, as well as the main soil management practices promoted in Spain through the Best for Soil project. For this purpose, I will present an overview of the activity in three main categories, meeting and workshops, communities of practice, 
and promotional actions. In Spain, have been held a total of 28 meetings and workshops throughout the project, with the first one in March of 2020. 20 of them were held on site, while the rest were online events, including the Best for Soil workshop for the Mediterranean Song held in December of 2020. In this way, we have reached a total of 340 attendees at the face-to-face -face events and 430 at the online events. Most of them have been mainly targeted to farmers and advisors, including several on-site training workshops on different practices, such as on the use of plant debris from different crops as an organic amendment, training workshop on solarization and biosolarization, on biofumigant crops, or even on the use of best for soil databases, among others. These are events which, together with the practical issue, they have always included oral communication to transfer knowledge on soil health and the best for soil project to the attendees. Other meetings not included as training workshop have been held through workshop or even through the participation in training course targeted to advisor from private companies and agricultural cooperative. This meeting have normally been offered by FAPA, our institution, although there are also meetings which have been held at the request of the stakeholders. This is the case of an agricultural cooperative that requested our service to train its farmer and advisor in soil biosolarization or that of a city council that organized a conference for farmer and advisor from the village located in the center of Spain, which even projected the conference in the plenary hall. Furthermore, we have held meetings for students and educators from both university and vocational training, and even for young farmers. And also meetings as conferences and congresses aimed at researchers, policy people, and other stakeholders interested in soil health and sustainable soil management. On the other hand, in Spain, we have created a total of 10 communities of practice on best for soil practices. The first one was a group of agricultural professionals with the common purpose of creating and unifying the knowledge about the use of cover crop and green manure under different conditions. This community arose after detecting a lack of information and contrasted experiences in the use of green manure under different conditions in the Spanish greenhouse sector. Maybe this experience represents the biggest challenge for me along the project, since at the beginning, we didn't clearly know what a community of practice was. This community of practice was composed by seven members, five women and two men from different locations in Spain. This is a researcher from a Horizon 2020 fund demo project, a research technician, advisor from public and private institution, and farmers with their own business. To date, we have had three online meetings. In order to specify the most relevant aspect that will allow us to define and constitute the community practice, we finally use a specific ICT tool on the advice of one of the members. Expected outcomes of this community are detailed at the bottom of the slide and include, for example, the preparation of a list of plant species with relevant information for the producer and even the preparation of audiovisual material on practices related to green manure and cover crops. This first experience gave rise to a new community set up to provide technical knowledge on the behavior of biofumigant crops under greenhouse conditions in south list of Spain, depending on the season. This is a multidisciplinary group composed of an advisor from a seed company with vast expertise in green manure, a farm manager, and four researchers, including a phytopathologist, an entomologist, and an expert in crop breeding. In this case, 
The green manure we are evaluating are radis, some hemp, sorghum Sudan grass hybrid, and Ethiopian master. And another community of practice related to green manure is this group composed of a farmer specialized in CBD hemp seed production, an advisor, and two researchers. This is a community that arose out of the farmer's interest to evaluate the use of CBD hemp flower remains after extracting the seeds as an organic amendment. So we are evaluating the effects of this organic material on the main physical, chemical, and microbiological properties of the soil, as well as on the development of CBD hemp and several green manure crops. Likewise, we created a new community of practice after detecting too much misinformation on biosolarization treatment among farmers and advisors in Almeria. So we got together a group of researchers and advisors. We are eight members in total with experience in soil biosolarization treatment who decided to unify the specific knowledge on this technique when applied in this area. To this end, we are developing a practical and rigorous man manual on soil biosolarization for vegetable greenhouse farmers and advisors from the southeast of Spain. And the last example I show you is this community of practice related to anaerobic soil disinfestation, which emerged after a training workshop due to the interest of an advisor. He was concerned about a cherry tomato growing area located in the province of Granada, where verticillium is the main soil pathogen and where farmers are unable to control it. So, as it is a cold area with very low temperatures in winter, where tomato crop is grown from, from spring to mid-autumn and therefore biosolarization treatment cannot be applied in summer, we thought we could carry out an anaerobic soil disinfestation. In this case, treatments will be performed next week. The rest of the communities of practice created in Spain are related to compost elaboration or the microbiological characterization of compost teas, as well as on the use of cover crops to avoid the use of harmful herbicide in citrus plots or on soil biosolarization treatment applied in commercial greenhouses. And now, regarding the promotional action, in Spain have been carried out a total of 65 of them during the project. These are very diverse, ranging from news in local and national newspapers, articles in journals, or communication in conferences, to posts in agro websites, mass mailing, or a promotional video. In this work, the support received from the Department of Communication of our institution has been very, very important. And finally, the main conclusions. Best for Soil has allowed the connection of Spanish key stakeholders with soil health. The dissemination of scientific knowledge with an eminently practical approach for the improvement of soil health has made possible to show practices that many stakeholders had never considered doing before. In this sense, given that farmer is the final link in the chain to implement these practices, I would like to emphasize the key role of advisor as a source of knowledge dissemination. Likewise, the role of educator is also highly relevant as they are responsible for the new seats in the students who represent our near future. The implementation of the boosted practices is considered to be the right way for a real transition from chemically managed soils to farming system systems based on sustainable management practices beyond input substitution. For example, a better understanding of the benefits of promoting soil biodiversity rather than aiming for sterile soil makes the farmer more connected to nature and therefore more receptive to a transition to more sustainable final farming system. And finally, Best for Soil has created 
a cross-fertilization of scientific knowledge on best practices for soil health improvement. In this regard, it has allowed us to open new lines of work that will be part of our future research. And here end my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. I would also like to thank all my colleagues and the rest of the staff involved in these activities. Also to my wife and my family. 